Come on, say something to Lithuanian audience. No, no, Shirde, Achu Lietuva, kad tu už palaikimą ir mes turėsim daugiau pergelės. Sergi, mas labuje! Sveiki visi, labai malonu matyti jūs čia eterėje. Šiandien yra mano pirmas podcastas ir šitam pirmam podcaste dalyvaus nekas kitas, o lietuvių kelmės kovotojas iš UFC – Modestas Bukauskas. Sveiki. Labas. Labas. Labai malo nuvatyti tave, Modestai. Ir... I think we're gonna speak in English. Yeah, I think it's, it's probably best. Process, probably a little bit better. <laughs> My English is broken, but maybe a no. little bit less broken than, than your mine. Lithuanian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, always before the start, I have a suggestion to cheers you know like like a uh, like a uh, norwegian um <coughs> norwegian uh, vikings say skull yes <laughs> choose your weapon <laughs> oh. Oh. one <laughs> two three <laughs> which one you would like i guess i'll go with the one that didn't uh go Before? in there and start shaking up <laughs> oh shit. That, that, that's that's a point that's a point mate but i'm a i'm sorry <laughs> I'm a big boy. I don't afraid of a little splash. A little splash. <laughs> Look at that skills. Oh fuck man. Cheers man. Cheers. It's Vekata. It's Vekata. Yeah. Lovely. So we heard we heard um, quite a few stories about the road to UFC. Tell me when did your uh, your start and what is your superpower? My super. So if we go back a very long time ago, uh, my dad is my main coach, um, Gintas Bukowskis. Um, he was a fighter back in the day. Um, you know, who's a Soviet Union no holds barred heavyweight champion. Um, so from five years old, we just started. You know, he kind of showed me some cool kicks, some some punches and stuff. And you know, at the beginning, it was very very playful. Yeah. How old were you? Were you? Five five years old. Or five years old. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So you know, just very playful, just like ah, look, this is cool, this is nice. And then, literally, about two weeks later, our dad goes, "No, nah, no, nah, now now we're training properly." I'm like, "Great, so the fun's oh, over man. now." Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> um, so how did you how did you feel about it? I mean, I didn't know at the time. I was just so young, you know. I mean, like I said, it was it was cool to to learn some some nice kicks and stuff. But I know just uh, when I was a kid, uh, my one of the old sisters' uh, boyfriends said, "Let's let's train. Let's I'm gonna train." And it looks quite cool actually uh, from the start. But when they started to stretch my legs and 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 doing you know everything on maximum, I said, "Fuck this shit! <laughs> I won't do this." You know, I, I was a kid yeah. then, I, but I always wanted it, but I, but couldn't manage it. I probably felt the same when I was young. as soon as we started, but I had no choice. It was either I, I, I literally just had no choice. My dad sort of at that time, like we he he kind of. He kind of made me do it, but I'm, I'm glad that he did because now I see like all the benefits and all the advantages that it's given me from, you know, almost like making me have to train, you know, teaching me about discipline and stuff like that. And, you know, that's probably why uh, technically with certain things, you know, they always talk about and commentating how technically we're better than other fighters just because obviously I started at a very young age. Uh, I started kickboxing, uh, competing. I became a four-time British kickboxing champion uh my dad also taught me sambo um i competed in judo uh it's funny my sister actually uh obviously trained with me as well she used to beat me up when i was younger and then you know obviously girls hit puberty earlier and then yeah, uh, i wanted, wanted to tell them <laughs> they grow older, but they're getting old to go earlier well, to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we grow till 50 yeah, and yeah. after 40, 30 uh, the girls start to like it, it starts to dip <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so then obviously when 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 I hit puberty, then obviously the tables turned. But um, yeah, so essentially uh, I competed in judo, uh, I competed in kickboxing, um, and I don't know. We we kind of stopped training like very seriously probably when I was I think maybe eleven um, because I, my dad sort of allowed me to pursue other sports. 
You know, um, my mum even just just thought, oh, you know, why don't you try tennis? So I tried playing tennis for a couple of years, got to an okay level, um, and then we found basketball. Um, you know, so and then I realised I had a bit of a talent for that, so I started training in in basketball. Um, and yeah, I wasn't really training martial arts uh, very seriously from from I would say about eleven years old, uh, but even still. Um, I ended up winning the uh, under 16 British kickboxing title, not even training like properly, you know. Um, so I've always had, you know, a sort of a knack for for fighting, I guess you could say. Um, I went to America for two years uh, from 16 to 18. I went to school there, played basketball out there, went to school there. I wanted to play Division I uh, basketball. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't work out. Obviously, that's every you know sort of Lithuanian's dream is to play in Division One in America, yeah. um, and then my one too. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Exactly. So, so all of us are brought up the same, you know. And then when I got to eighteen, uh, I finished school. I had a conversation with my dad, and do you know, what? when I went to America, I, I I learned so many different things, like you know, Olympic weightlifting. You know, my athleticism increased, my muscle increased. And uh, it, it was always my dream, I think, even since like a, a young kid to do something a little bit, a little bit different, not to do like the normal thing, like to be an accountant or a banker or something like that. It was always to do something that uh, not everyone does. And um, I, from that point, I, you know, I thought I want to be a professional athlete. You know, I don't want to leave, leave the story there of ne not really achieving the highest level in the sport that I choose. And um, obviously we saw that the the place where I had the most success was in fighting. So, you know, 18 years old, I was still in America at the time. My dad goes, you can either go to university, you know, do the regular thing, get a normal job, or you can come back home, we'll just get you a job straight away. And then let, let's, uh, let's start training properly and try and, you know, go towards your dream of going to the UFC. And then obviously from there, everything sort of escalated. But, um, you know, the, the, you, you can, be good at, at, at some point and at, at some sports or some activities but uh, the main thing uh, you have to be happy by doing it yeah so from all the sports the martial arts was was your favorite the, yeah no 100 percent. i think when i was younger i i mean i liked it obviously i was good at it um but because you know my dad wanted to obviously instill discipline and make sure i trained and did everything right uh not to say that it, it made me not like it uh, that much, but so uh, you know that's that's all you knew, that's all you did. You know, kind of think you know you see kids playing outside, they're playing football, doing something different. You know, you kind of want to do the same thing. You see them party and you know out all the girls and everything. And I wasn't doing any of that. So um, you know, I think m my love for sports in in general is what sort of you know fueled me. And then obviously the competitive aspect of you know. Uh, going against another another man and you know showing who's better at the end of the day like in in, in sort of a in a physical way um, I've always been good at it and I've always I've always enjoyed it um, for some reason I've always been drawn to it so uh, yeah it, it just made sense for me and I wanted to be a professional athlete I didn't I didn't care what sport it was that's kind of what I, what I wanted to do for a living so um, lo, lo and behold it's it's happened but that, that's what I wanted to do you know like I said do something different do something crazy and uh, definitely being a professional fighter is, uh, is one of those things. Like in the school, uh, they, they told, not only me, that uh, for a lot of kids, ah, uh, this kid is stupid, they, he gonna <laughs> grow up like uh, a criminal because he, he can't uh, manage to, you know, to work with his mind and blah, blah, blah. But man, sometimes you don't need to, to work with your mind so much. If, if, uh, if your best weapon is your body, you need to work with your body, and yeah. I think it, there's there's no stupid people around. Just uh, each each person have his own destiny or, or uh, his place in life, like what what he he's doing. If you're like uh, really good uh, in math, maybe maybe you're gonna suck in uh, physics, you <laughs> yeah. know, or 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 in or, or in yep. uh, I don't know something else. <laughs> so every every, every people. Uh, Everyone uh, have to find his own place and and think that that he's 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 enjoying doing. Yeah. That is the main thing I think in yeah. life. You have to enjoy what you do. Yeah. And what about basketball? What 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 went wrong with basketball? Um, because I, me me I really wanted, but 
I didn't have no opportunities to 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 train basketball. But yeah. what about you? You were in the uh, um, USA, and it's like wow. Yeah, I think just you know I'm going to be plain and honest and true. It just wasn't good enough, you know, skills wise. Uh, I I started on the basketball team, like you know, it's a big thing to be a starter on the basketball team in high school. We got to the semi final of the state tournament, and the team that we lost to. I think about seven of their guys went to a Division One school and got oh. a scholarship. So they, okay. and a guy that I played against, he's now in the NFL. He was massive. He was eighteen. He was uh, six foot seven and like two hundred and fifty pounds. He was, you know, like okay. absolutely massive. So, I mean, chicken all new. Yeah, yeah, for real, for real. <laughs> he was a man child. It's like he had a, he he had like a really manly body, but then but like a very high pitched voice. So it's like, oh. hey, how are you doing, man? Like Mike Tyson. Like massive, like Mike yeah. Tyson, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Animal, animal, just yeah. fucking animal. Like Mike Tyson, hello guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you know, I've, yeah, just gen genuinely, uh, I just didn't have enough skills. And, you know, being six foot three, maybe if I was a bit taller, like six foot five, six, six foot six, my skills would translate and you know maybe i'll be able to compete a bit better but you know as a point guard you know there's just so many or or, or a shooting guard there's just so many good players out there mm -hmm. and especially if you want to go division one you have to sort of separate yourselves from the pack where i felt i didn't necessarily separate myself i played well but i didn't play like anything outstanding okay and uh, what is basketball is like uh, in, in in great britain um i mean there's some there are some very good like unique talents uh they i mean they they train very similar to how americans train to be honest with you i just think there's there's not such a massive choice of talented people out there and obviously people are, are you know genetically probably a lot shorter than they are in america so i mean they've got a good system out there uh but again in schools they they don't push it so much um you know they if you want to play basketball, you have to play for a team, which is what I did. Uh, like you, you, you go to like national tournaments and stuff like this. So some of the best players end up going to division one schools okay. uh, to play in university, like some of the, the very best. Usually most people from, from England, if they, if they end up going far, they end up playing in Europe somewhere. Um, but yeah, it's it's not known for many from England to go to the NBA or anything like that. But th there are a lot of players that do go to like Division One schools. Not, 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 not so long ago, uh, London Lions were playing in Vilnius. Oh yeah, and they <laughs> they beat us. Yeah. They, they, they beat, beat it. They beat us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now now our our team has a like a. We're in a hole. Yeah, we just need uh, to get out of the, the, this hole, and it's, it's I, th it. I think it, it's going to be better in future. But yeah. but yeah, we, we got, got our ass kicked. <laughs> actually, <laughs> it was quite sad. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> I can Especially imagine. from London. Man. Yeah, it's like you're thinking like these guys can't can't be good at basketball. Yeah, surely, yeah, yeah. Foot, <laughs> football, soccer, yeah, 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 yeah. of course. <laughs> but basketball, man. Okay, and uh, let's talk about your dad. That give you a perfect start in martial arts, and as I know, he's still in uh, in your corner. Yeah. Uh, what is, what is his role in in your career? He's like my my mentor, my my head coach. Uh, he helps me put everything together. Uh, I've got another coach uh, in the UK. His name's Danny Batten. So obviously, they work together very well. Um, my dad does does all of my striking, does all my pad work, does all my strength and conditioning. All of that, I don't even have to think about. He just does it all himself. Um, he comes and watches me spar. He's he's like my mate, the main guy, really. I'll go to other clubs, like, you know, I'll go for wrestling, I'll go for jiu-jitsu, I'll go to my MMA gym twice a week. Um, it's a bit of a far drive. It's about an hour and 15, sometimes an hour and a half to get to my MMA I know, gym. I, 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 I've been in London for three months. And yeah. It's difficult I, I, to I find lived that, place. I, I lived that life. <laughs> yeah, worked, worked, worked all day, and 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 go to, and to then train. And then have to go to train. Two, two hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, he, you know, he helps me mentally uh, with a lot of things, um, and he's just like a also a very good, very good spirit in the corner, and he he always seems to know what the correct thing to do. You know, in some of my fights, obviously things haven't gone our way, but it's usually when I when I get caught in an exchange or something like that, and you know, some of those things it's it's hard to 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 stop, right? But like for example, with my fight against Marcin Wojciech, 
in the in the corner, all I could hear was spinning back kick, spinning back kick. And that was my dad. And the next thing you know, I throw the spinning back kick and I knock the guy out. Uh, with Marth and Hamlet, when I won the belt the first time, um, I was I was kind of walking around and then he goes, the right hand's going to land, the right hand's going to land. Next thing you know, that's exactly what happened. Beautiful. Same thing with the elbows uh, for both my UFC debut and uh, defending my Cage Warriors belt. Again, the person that was shouting elbows was my dad. So he he always gives me like, I don't know, like you're saying what 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 my superpower is it's just like he's he's almost like the guy who gives me that superpower you know so uh yeah so along with like us building my my training routine and everything together uh being my main coach strength and conditioning striking strategy um he blends and works very well with all the other coaches and he's also very open-minded um I feel like a lot of coaches are very close-minded. They have one particular way of doing yeah. things and then that's it. Nothing else is going to work, that's you know? So beautiful. he's he's always open to trying to uh, learn new things, do things differently. And how can we adapt to the ever-growing sport that is, you know, obviously MMA. Things are always changing. People are always getting better and you have to learn to adapt. So one thing that I really do appreciate is that my dad is never stuck in his own ways. He's always trying to find ways to get better and improve. And, you know. And there are always uh, better ways, always. Yeah, yeah, 100%. That's cool. That's really cool. <laughs> and uh, uh, what about other gyms? Like uh, you said that they're close-minded. And uh, how do they, like, tr just like greet you uh over uh, over there like like in, in our in our in our country usually people are really close to like you know they they not not they don't like to share they don't like to help they don't like you know to be friendly from another regime like rivals <laughs> man we're some small country you need you need to work in, and, and be friends and, and yeah. help each other you know but uh but what about england well, i've been very fortunate um Anyone that I've come across, even yourself, has been very has been very friendly, has been very sort of giving, wanting to to give their 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 knowledge and stuff like that. So uh my other MMA coach uh from the UK, he's also in my corner. Uh, as I mentioned before, his name's Danny Batten. Uh I train at a gym called BST. And um he's also got a very sort of similar philosophy where he understands that MMA is changing, you know, that you always need to find a bit like I remember him teaching a technique from three years ago he says that's not going to work now we have to do it this way instead you know and f something that me and my dad really uh really think is is one way to sort of become better and like to always constantly evolve is just to be around people that kind of you have a, a much more of a connection with you know so that coach back in the UK We've got a very good connection with him. Like we're we're also very good friends. You know, we're we're not just uh, you know oh, I just come to the gym, I just train, and 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 that's it. So um, I think that relationship between us all together, you know, inevitably makes us a lot better. Um, but as, aside from the MMA gym that I train at, everything else I have to train like you know specific arts like rest. I go to a freestyle wrestling gym. I go to do. Uh, jiu-jitsu at Hodger Gracie's Academy so I have to train those things separately and then yeah. essentially the MMA training is for us to just put everything to together yeah yeah, yeah. to connect it yeah about the daily routines when you you have to go you know go in a lot of places like you said uh, there's uh, like one and a half hour road yeah, and, yeah. and everything and we we know that uh, like MMA fighter daily routine is uh, quite different from uh, from other athlete routine yeah, yeah. and what is your day schedule, schedule? yeah so normally I, I still have to I, I, I still do personal training uh, I haven't got to the level where I can just leave it completely um, even though I'm working towards that um, you know make a bit of extra money there mm -hmm. as well um, so usually uh, I'll teach maybe one or two privates early in the morning um then i'll come home maybe rest for about an hour or two and then usually i'll have at least one session with my dad so whether that be strength and conditioning striking um whatever the case is i'll do always one session with my dad and then uh in every, the evening every day uh yeah every day yeah yeah, yeah. uh apart, we weekends apart from apart from saturday 
apart from Saturday. So Monday, Saturday, Monday Saturday, to Friday. Saturday or Sunday? Uh, Saturday. Saturday. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we train, uh, obviously, yeah. So we train once and then in the evening, like on Monday, for example, I'll go and do, um, I'll go to my MMA gym in the evening. Uh -huh. So I'll always come back home quite late at night. Um, on Tuesday, for example, I'll go to wrestling in the evening. Uh, on on Wednesday, uh, I'll go to jiu-jitsu. Thursday, I'll go to jiu-jitsu. Um, you know, stuff like this. So, and then Saturday, go to wrestling. So it's just trying to work everything all together, really. Uh, for the most part, me and my dad, we, we kind of just stick to working on the striking and the strength and conditioning. So that's what okay. me and him do together. Okay. And what kind of, which of, uh, from those disciplines are your favorite? Um, to be honest with you, I've really started to, to enjoy wrestling. Um, I really, uh, because, because no, nobody hits you to the face. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's definitely one of the reasons <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wrestling, I, I, wrestling or grabbing? Uh, like, uh, nah, like freestyle wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. I, I really, I don't know, just just the thought of like taking someone down, like, I, I don't know, controlling them is like, I don't know, it's some, some, something nice in my head. Um, I mean, I, I like jujitsu, but the, uh, there's there's so many intricate, like weird movements that you have to do. And, and like I say, I think like that's the sport which is the most evolving over time. And it, that's one of the arts where if you don't train it every day, it's yeah. very difficult to, to 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 keep up with some of the best guys. You know, obviously just with my competitive spirit and stuff like that, like you know, I, I can sort of just hang in there a little bit with some of the top guys. But that's where it's the hardest technically, I think, is jujitsu. Uh, but yeah, I mean, to be honest, obviously striking is my for me is my bread and butter. I, I realize obviously training with yourself that there are are still many things that. Uh, I need to learn and obviously improve upon, but this is why I say, like, especially since my my loss to Khalil Roundtree, I've I've been very open minded to try and expand my my uh, my knowledge and my horizons and and make myself better. So, uh, yeah, for me, it's like my first. Obviously, I love striking, uh, then wrestling, then jujitsu. Okay, and um, you visited. You visited Lithuania, if I, if I'm, correct me if I'm right, or well, if I'm wrong, uh, 10 years ago, the last time. Yeah, it was like, yeah, nine years ago, I think, something like that. Nine years. Yeah. And what kind of Lithuania do you remember uh, from those days? I've, I can't, was it the last time when it was our grandparents' funeral? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean. When? Yeah, ten so years it ago. was 10 years, ten years ago. Um, yeah, so obviously I was there for uh, one of my grandparents' funeral, so it was it was a bit of a sad time. Yeah. But um, I don't know, obviously we, we'd always like kind of go around the cities and everything like that. Like even coming around this time, you know, seeing family and seeing friends and stuff like that, like you sort of just remember certain things and certain surroundings and, and stuff like that. And I get a real sense of, like a very home, homely feeling, you know. Although I've got a very strong British accent, and and you know I, I can't speak Lithuanian properly or anything like that. Like I, I still feel, like you know, uh, the 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 nation holds very strongly in my heart. Always, every single time, you know, I, I come over here, I feel like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, really, fr from that last time that I was there, I just uh, yeah, like I say, I just I just remember the surroundings and and. Uh, uh like being around like uh family and stuff like this and uh yeah like even driving around here i can kind of just remember things that i, I that i was seeing even though but, it was 10 did, years did, ago did, did you have a free time uh, uh that time or, or you just came to the funeral I've, I've, and flew I've, away i mean we, we 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 went to um see other family members and and um and yeah like we didn't really go exploring too much i remember we had a trip before that where we literally explored we went to trake um went to the castle and stuff like that but that was ages ago yeah. that, that was a very long time ago so to be honest I, it was probably so long ago that i can't really remember too much i'll probably need to have another another time where i'm doing a bit more touristy kind of stuff and um the story is quite quite interesting um uh, your dad is from kaunas <laughs> your mama is from vilnius and you're from Klaipeda. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we, all of they you want to uh, spread uh, our seed everywhere. You yeah. know? <laughs> 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 and now you're in, in, in UK. Don't, are you like, you, did you thought uh, about moving to Lithuania one day? <laughs> I you, mean, you know, when, when, you, when you're visiting or, or talking uh, or like, like, you know, to, to family members or something, the, 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 the idea of, of coming back to Lithuania. I mean, to be, you or not? To, to, to be honest, like now that I've been here <laughs> this time round, uh, after obviously training with you and, and some of the other guys and just being around the surroundings and stuff like that, like, um, I do really love it. I mean, I think I'm so used to living in London that I, it'll be hard to completely change my environment, but I definitely think that I want to come here more, uh, 100%. Uh, I even feel like I want to come back here just even to learn the language properly um, and, and stuff like that. Just The, to, bad, the bad words. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 We're going to peep it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we definitely hear those things flying around in my household. Yeah, be, yeah be, because, because some people don't understand without those words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it just meshes everything together, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so like... I, I really do like like I say, the the it always holds something dear to my heart, uh Lithuania. Um um you know every like, time like, like like even now we can we can see the, the highlights and, and it's it's beautiful that, that you know after after your wins, uh you take the Lithuanian flag and, and you know and uh I, put it up. I know for some people it seems a bit crazy and you know that like oh hold on a minute he's not actually Lithuanian like you you hear me talk and you hear me b b by my accent and everything but you know being born in Kleber the like you know it means a hell of a lot to me even even my dad has like some pictures of like um us us back in the day and stuff like that so it's it's very it's very dear to my heart and uh I definitely uh, as I mentioned, uh, since being here, even like what well, I've only been here for like six days, uh, or I'm going to be here for six days. I want to come back and do more trainings, you know, trying to Im improve my skill set, maybe do more things, improve the language and stuff like that. I definitely feel like in, in a weird spiritual sort of way, um, had I lost that last fight, potentially, maybe, I don't know what would have happened, but maybe that was a sign from God, you know, uh, to, to, to come here um even just to visit my uh uh my dad's parents grave yeah. uh was was quite a quite quite a big thing and i feel like there's some just some sort of spiritual calling and then how everything like come together and even me training with you you saw how many mistakes i was making and stuff like this it's like maybe this was how everything was supposed to happen you know that's what i gen genuinely think because even when the really bad knee injury happened i felt yeah. like in my at the time in my journey that needed to happen to make the changes to make myself go further not only in the ufc but in life and and my career in general everything is happening for a reason yeah 100 percent 100 percent i noticed that <laughs> this year life is banging me <laughs> from behind <laughs> Without even speeding, <laughs> it was painful. Raw, <laughs> yeah. Like first half year, it was painful. But after, when I just I mm, took down the pressure by uh, understanding that um, that we need changes, and the problem is that that people are afraid of changes, mm -hmm. and they are like stressing a lot about the changes. But we need to change this for growing if we want yeah. to grow and develop as a human beings mm -hmm. we need to to have those new things in our lives and, and those changes yeah no 100 percent. i definitely 100%. agree with you on that yeah. okay and um now you had an opportunity to to train with uh like one of the best uh, lithuanian fighters um you visited Sparta Gym of uh, stand up. You visited uh, Lurina Surbanajus and uh, Thomas Pokotinskas to have had the opportunity to tr drill uh, and have a little uh, wrestle with them. Uh, what are your impressions? I mean, they're obviously <laughs> the, the 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 technicality of the movements, especially in wrestling for uh, Urban Avichus, is 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 very good. Uh, it's I. I I definitely see uh, similarities in, in, in the way that we're doing things, a, s a slight tweaks, for example, that maybe I need to do, but 
Uh, obviously, Urban Avich is very strong. He's he's very technical. Um, he 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 knows what he's doing. Um, and and the level is very high, which he's is a, he's a firefighter. Yeah, 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 Physically yeah, firefighter. Yeah, a hundred percent. He's 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 very uh, very physically strong, and he's got good technique on top of that. So uh, and he's a very nice guy as well. You know, this is this is another thing. He's 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 a really good person. Um, and yeah, he's just trying to trying to help me out. And you know, obviously wrestling against him, you can see he he. He goes from one movement to the to the next with, with without any effort. You know what I mean? Like I, I block one thing, and then he's straight onto another thing. Then I have to block another thing. Then he's on something else. So he's very good. And and Pakotinskas, I mean, he's honestly the strongest guy that I've ever went up against in my life. Like he grabs hold of you, he's like a bear. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, trying to get out of any positions with him is uh, is uh, very very tough. Very tough, I must admit. So uh, yeah. The, those guys obviously uh, uh, Man, very when, when he's he's working uh, with our uh, uh, physical condition coach all all the guys in the gym are like <laughs> I can see why <laughs> what, what kind of weights he worked with like uh, yeah the guys I, that, that always you know in the gym and pumping and like what the yeah I, I, I can 100% see why because <laughs> yeah like I say when he gets a grip on you it's but, just, I, you, but no the way. Main, main thing while well, I'm always angry about him that I can't make him just fucking stretch oh yeah to relax a little bit <laughs> do the stretching uh, I, mean, i will start to do i will start to do i will start to do from next and still every, after a week he come again like this i start i help to stretch him he like ah always in pain everything's so tired but, but yeah. now now i will start now i will start uh, like, next week again <laughs> We we'll like start. We we'll start the stretching on Monday. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't say which Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and obviously training, uh, training with you has been very insightful. Um, like your guys, obviously very, very, very technically good. I think in my head when I was moving around with those guys, I was trying to, I was trying too much to think about doing the technique like correctly as opposed to just letting myself flow. When I'm trying to learn new things, I try and. Uh, take it on board like a hundred percent uh i kind of sometimes i forget like there's there's moves that i like to do as well yeah. but but i want to like really try and learn it and try and add it to my game so obviously i try and try and put it out there but uh you know th those guys are very technical they're very good obviously they know their kickboxing um so, same with yourself I, i can see why you hit so hard and why you why you knock people out do you know what i mean because yeah, yeah yeah this is exactly <laughs> the sledgehammer because you know the rotation that you get the uh the stability and stuff like this these these are things that um you know i definitely need to in mma i guess i'll probably fight a little bit differently because of the fact that there's takedowns and and, and stuff like this and I, i realize that there are a lot of guys as well that um are actually quite flat-footed even like my last opponent you know yeah but but look at the at Pereira. yeah He didn't uh, change his technique a lot yeah. when he came, came from uh, Glory to to UFC. Yeah, he yeah. still stands the same uh, as as in Glory. Yeah. yeah, hands down. But he boom, yeah. boom, yeah. all those punches are like. Pfft. Yeah, I, c I can imagine they're very powerful. Yeah, like and he, he, like like the same with you rotating your full body and your hips, using your body and stuff like this. Um, so yeah, I mean, these these are things that. Like I say, it was like a calling from God, you know, what do I need to work on to, to make myself the best? You know, it's like, okay, you're not going to win your last fight uh, because we need to, I feel like from losses is where you really have the, the main lessons, you know, then you try and figure everything out and that's where you can make the most changes in order to make yourself better. So I feel like that almost had to happen in order for me to do things like this, uh, for me to do this type of training. And, you know, like I say, I definitely want to do it more uh in, in the future opportunity to to do it uh, even earlier yeah 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 but you need you need to that's it yeah, yeah exactly. to, to get, need, get a lesson from need, life yeah you, to need, come you, need, you need to get the belt to the bum you know what i mean and i, I definitely had that so and, and, and now we're, we're taking you like uh apollo creed that took uh, rocky yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> <It's exactly, laughs> if, they would, if they would record it it would be exactly the same <laughs> like feet all over the place like you know and stuff like that um yeah and it's crazy because like i say it's like i'm even thinking about when i go back home uh and stuff like that is like I, i can just see myself already just like doing so much better even just with these little things so yeah, yeah. um you know little I'm, things that uh, make big difference yeah 100 so uh yeah i'm very excited again uh obviously once i finish this trip to to come back again and come for a bit long longer time you know not, not to be here for just a couple of days you know cool.
Um, let's talk about uh, emotional states. Losses. Nobody likes losses. I will see you always happy <laughs> when you win, but losses. Uh, how you manage to deal with uh, your psychological state after losses? I think, do you know what? I think it's just, again, the thought of progression, the thought of getting of getting better. You almost see life, it really, it really does kick you down, you know? Uh, you go on a, and I'll just explain it like just from in terms of my career. I go on a four fight win streak. Everyone's talking about me. Everyone's saying, oh, he's the next big thing. I'll go to uh, Albuquerque to train um, to train with uh, at Jackson Wink, you know, which was at that time one of the best gyms. Yep. Uh, training with John Jones, Andre Olovsky, or all these guys. I, I kind of felt like I should be on top of the world. And then <laughs> when I come back home, I end up losing my first ever MMA fight. Uh, the guy was very experienced, obviously a lot more experienced than me, but yeah, lost lost my first fight. And then uh, I got back into the ring quite quickly after that. I think it was only a couple of months. And then uh, um, again, I had my second defeat in a row. And uh, it was mad because again, winning the whole fight and then I get caught with a punch. And then it just makes you sort of, at that point, this is the, the fucking paradox of our sport. Yeah, you can win all the fight in a few seconds, and then and boom. next thing you know, exactly. And the guy, you know, kind of blind, closes his eyes, throws the punch, and then the one who's technical, you know, kind of goes down. But again, this this is something that was needed. It kind of every time I've had a loss, it made me take a step back and made me think, look, like, okay, so why is this actually happening? If I would take it in 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 the respect of, or if I'll try and say, oh well, if I look at the 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 situation as itself just just what it is then i would i would i would end up just being depressed and you know you know you can't look at it like oh my god i lost like that's horrible no it's like you know you got to think of like okay but how can we actually move forward from it? it is very hard because you feel you feel very sad like it's, it's probably in in this sport it's the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows when you're so low it's a proper proper low you even see people start to look at you differently they don't uh they don't appreciate you as much i saw people in the gym that used to say hi to me all the time and then they, they just walk past me as if i'm not even there and i'm just like what's going on but it almost makes me kind of go in a bit in isolation like kind of just be with myself yeah. obviously with my dad and uh, one thing i will say is that every time i have had a loss my dad's always the first one to try and think what are we doing next? Like, how are we going to progress from this? Even though myself mentally, I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. I just want to kind of maybe just forget about everything. He's always thinking, like, what can we do next? And I know it probably hurts him just the same as it does me. Maybe, but maybe even more. Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine probably probably even more because, like, you know, he's watching it from the side. He's like, why, why can't it go right for him, you know? But then that's when you take your like you know day by day day by day day by day trying to improve try and figure out what you're doing and then you start seeing the improvements you start seeing yourself pick things up do things better and then it just slowly motivates you to to okay well we're going to get ready for the next fight you know what i mean and sometimes it even it, it, at that point i took like quite a lot of months so it was even like a, more than a year off and it's just like trying to improve trying to get better so that when we come back in the cage we don't let that happen again Went on a massive win streak. Uh, obviously got to the UFC. Uh, won my debut. Um, and then the second fight that I had, uh, you know, I fought Jimmy Crute, who was at that time, I think he was going in towards the top 15. Way too early, you know. And again, caught with a punch off of a technique. The same technique I used, uh, the same technique Rose Namajunas used against uh, Zhang Wei Li. She knocked her out, but Jimmy Crute was working j off of that particular move just to counter with the right hand, which is exactly what he did. I think that one, aside from the Khalil fight, probably hurt me the most. Because uh, the Oleg Shechuk fight, a lot of people thought I won that fight. For me, that was like, okay, there's things to improve here, but like, you know, I'm still on a high because I went out there and fought, you know? Whereas in Jimmy Crute fight, I really didn't show anything, you know? And to get caught like that really badly hurt me. I remember my dad even tried to sort of hug me after the fight and I just, I, I didn't even know where I was. I was kind of like very, very hazy, uh, uh, cool. you know? But obviously the worst one for me was the, uh, was the Khalil fight because everything just seemed to go on the down after that with the knee, the loss, getting cut from the UFC and stuff like this. But it always goes back to the same thing, um, which is just day by day. What can we do day by day to slowly make improvements? You know, 
it's gonna and you gotta just accept that it's gonna hurt it's not gonna feel great you're gonna be upset uh but it's like what can you do to move forward what can you do to 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 continue to better yourself as long as you're bettering yourself this situation isn't like the be all and end all you know yeah. so um that's usually what i do after losses even after the last loss it's like okay you know got caught of a punch um you know again s silly how i i made i made a mistake technically that forced me to have a loss and you're like bloody hell i was just starting to get win streak together and stuff like this how can we prove and how can we move again, forward there's all, all everything about those small steps yeah small things that yeah. you need, need to, to to change yeah small things yeah small things here small thing, thing there like like i said if you change like two percent on your feet two percent on your uh, arms uh three percent on your body uh, rotation of uh, one percent uh, on your feeling how much percent already you, you yeah improved? yeah you yeah a hundred percent and you grow 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 all the time you look at it and it's like you're looking up at mount everest you're like if you just look at it from from on you know on the ground and you look yeah, up yeah. You, it looks like oh, how the hell am i going to do this yeah. but you keep walking you keep climbing up and then slowly the top's going to be you know a lot more visible so yeah. uh yeah for me after losses it's all about it's all about improvement and how can we how can we learn from this how can we move forward and then i think it's gotten bet i wouldn't say easier but i think i've gotten better at dealing with it as i've gotten older um just because i understand that it's a process and uh i think i've i've definitely uh if you i remember you asked me what my superpower was i think my superpower is coming back from adversity um i think that's one thing that uh even in in, in fights that uh that's one of the things that i can do really well is coming back from adversity being down two rounds and then being able to get the knockout or 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 whatever and then in life it beats you it hurts you it throws you to the floor but you can come back so yeah um a lot of people are you know seeing seeing only the the roses <laughs> when you go out to, to the to the cage to the ring a lot of uh, cameras a lot of pictures a lot of fans a lot of everything uh, lights blah 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 music you fight doesn't matter you win you lose you're a f superstar but the road the road to the fight is really really difficult really difficult and it's it's really lonely yeah. i know that yeah you know that yeah and um of course uh i believe that you too had those moments in your life when you say "Fuck that shit i want to stop i want to quit you had those moments and how often do you have those moments do you know and and how how do you manage to to go through yeah so i mean i think it's a i think it's a little bit i, I think it's probably a little bit different to me i think i almost put too much pressure on myself I actually remember you uh, sent me a message. You you just said uh, before my last fight, just go out and have fun. You know what I mean? And I actually uh, probably didn't take that advice on board as much as I should have. You know, like I should have went out there and and had fun and not put too much pressure on myself. One thing about me is is that especially with with uh, with this fighting, I've I've kind of never really thought about quitting. I thought about not doing training sessions or oh, bloody hell, why do i have to go here and why i have to do that but i've never said to myself ah oh, uh, i don't want to you know i don't want i don't want to do this anymore i've been in in bad spots after the khalil fight with my knee you know it was mad because i had a massive motivation just to almost prove everyone wrong it's like you think i'm never going to come back from this well just watch you know so uh i've had times where i've like I say, I've not wanted to train. I've, 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 you know, I felt, I felt sore, you know, sick or whatever. And you know, you still go and train. You still do do what you're supposed to do. Um, but I don't think I've ever told myself that I was ever gonna that I was ever gonna stop fighting uh, itself. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that sort of mindset, the the kind of sort of relentless uh, mindset of never never quitting. I guess you could say. I think this it runs so deep in my head um especially with, with with my dad as well that you know it's never even never even comes into my thought process about ever quitting mma you know yeah. because some people you know doesn't matter what what they do in life uh but they have th those kind of thoughts you know maybe to start to do something else yeah like 
to, to stop doing this, but there's no money, there's no success, there's no you know support, there's no nothing. And especially now, in nowadays, when they get the information from the Instagram that everyone is, one is happy, everyone is like uh, successful uh, and rich and blah 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 blah. Maybe I need to do something else. <laughs> Start trading <laughs> and, and put all your money there. You know, like oh, no. I need to become a TikTok star. Yeah, now, yeah, 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 yeah. Start dance, dancing. Start on dancing on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and yeah, and those stupid thoughts uh, are coming uh, to people's head that that maybe start you know change, but uh, they're forgetting that all successful people have one main thing uh, in common. Consistency, the I consistency see. all the time. Do the same thing, go to, on the same road, and like you said, ups and downs, ups and downs. But consi be consistent, go forward, and the success will will come. Yeah, enjoy and enjoy the process. You know, That's enjoy the sure. process. Sure. You know, I think I definitely a hundred percent. I learned that because after the after the Khalil fight. I had a long period of time where I had to recover from my knee. And uh -huh. then I had, you know, it was a long period of time before, I think it was 14 months before I went back into the cage again. And, you know, I was talking with my manager, what promotion we we're going to fight for, what are we going to do, you know, because uh, uh, I was already to, I was already training properly in March of that year and I didn't fight till November. And so you're kind of just sitting there, you're working, you're training, and but there's no fight, there's nothing at the end and you're, and you know, I remember I'll get frustrated in training and my dad would say to me like, why, why are you getting frustrated? Just work on getting better. And at the time I was thinking, yeah, get better, but I haven't got something on the end. But it's like, what he said like made so much sense. It's like, yeah, actually enjoy that. Enjoy going to the gym every single day and doing what you love. And genuinely, when I started actually taking that on board and yeah. actually thinking, ah, okay. And like, you think more about the techniques. Okay, so where's this little thing? It like makes you excited, you know? And I would feel, have that sensation every day, you know? Wonderful. Um, and leading up to that, leading up to that fight in, in November, which was, you know, a long time since, since, since the last fight, but that, that was a big thing. It's like every single day you've got to just wake up and think, okay, I'm going to improve today. I'm going to, I'm going to get better and just like, enjoy everything that is you're doing um because otherwise you know what the hell is the point the end goal is is not the main thing it's everything that goes before that you yeah, know what i mean yeah. and then it, it makes you perform better ultimately because you're enjoying what you're doing beforehand so uh yeah now especially i'm just trying to enjoy the day to day get better do you know what i mean learn something new uh and um yeah just like enjoy it man and you talk about the mountain um if you look at yourself 10 years ago would you believe if someone told you that you're going to be in a spot uh, where you are right, right now i mean like do you know what i always thought i would i'll be in the ufc you know because it's, it's a question because uh you know um uh, if we talk about the young people uh a lot of people maybe want to start to do something in life but they don't start because they don't believe that they can when we talk about the consistency. Yeah. Uh, if someone told me 10 years ago, you're going to be the number one light heavyweight in the world keep, keep in kickboxing? What? <laughs> Drink less, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Party less, man. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And what about you? Yeah, I mean, when I, s the thing I had in my head, uh, I don't know, I, I, I guess it's just from, from training with my dad and him being so like, like close to me all the time. I've always wanted to reach the pinnacle, reach the top of, of whatever sport it was. So it was tennis, I wanted to be the best. If it was basketball, I wanted to be the best. You know what I mean? Even though unfortunately those things didn't work out, but the mentality was I wanted to be the best. So I was always saw myself playing in the NBA or playing here or doing something. So it was exa exactly the same with fighting. Um, you know, uh, I had eight fights as an amateur, uh, seven and one. And then obviously I went to become a pro. And uh, from the start of my career, um, all the way through, all the thought that was in my head was, I'm going to be, I'm going to be in the UFC, and that, you know, that was bloody hell when I was 21, and even 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 before that. So if you're looking at like 19, even when I was amateur, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, you know, I'm gonna be the best at this. If I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go all in, and I'm gonna make sure that I that, that I uh, that I do it. So I always knew. That I was going to be in the UFC. I like. I kind of in my head. I had some weird premonition, thinking to myself that, do you know what? 
this this is going to happen for me and i think it's just because as well like because i put everything into it i'm like if i put everything into this there's no way it won't happen you know what i mean so it's mad how the story has happened you know like even when i first got the first call to the ufc and it was at like three in the morning i'm going to you know take a piss uh and i'm coming back to my room and i see i see a message from my manager he and he's been trying to call me like constantly oh, this, this was after the first uh the first cage warriors defense and um yeah i was literally just in my room and, and i thought i didn't think anything of it you know i just defended my belt in my head i thought i'm probably gonna have to defend it again and then uh and then I say, yo, like, are you cool to talk then? And he goes, yeah. And then, uh, you can't sleep. Uh, yeah, you, you, want, you want a romantic uh, talk? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, exactly. It's like, what's, what's my manager talking to me at like, you know, three, three in the morning for, yeah. and then, uh, and then he goes, how you doing? I'm like, yeah, I'm not bad. I'm half asleep. But aside from that, I'm, I'm, I'm all good. He goes, and I go, you know, what's going on? Yeah. He goes, um, how, how do you, how do you feel about fighting in the UFC in your next fight? And I, like straight away, it was it was mad because almost like law of attraction and just like thinking about it so much, like all the time that it almost just felt natural. It felt like that's what was supposed to happen. Everything that I was thinking in my head, that's exactly how it was supposed to happen. It was already like a massive like shock to me. I'm like, am I actually, is this actually real? Or am I dreaming right yeah, now? Yeah, <laughs> Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And then obviously I went, it's mad because my, my dad's reaction was actually like very subtle. Like he kind of, he wasn't like amazingly, he's like, oh, well good. Like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, that's, yeah. He's what like, the, that's what it should have been. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Exactly. It's like whatever promotion. So so for him, he's he's always a bit more interested to find out who we're fighting and, 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 and stuff like that. I think the more of the meaning for, for for me was actually the second time round getting re-signed by the UFC after everything happened. Because yeah. if you asked me ten years ago, would I have one of the worst knee injuries ever? You know, uh, being would I, would I get to the UFC and then get cut? I would say hell no. I'm going to be in the UFC and I'm going to be there to stay. Yeah. So for everything to unfold as it did, I was literally driving home from training and already on that day. They called me and said, you're going to have to defend your cage warriors belt. We've got a fight. He was getting ready to sign the contracts. I was like, okay. I went to training, did did my thing. I come home. It was about 10.30 at night. Get a call from my manager. And he does a, he, he wanted a FaceTime call. Oh. And again, I didn't, at that point, I had no idea like, you know, that he, he would tell me what he did. I drove to the side of the road and, uh, uh, I said, yo, what's going on, man? He goes, how's your weight? I'm like, ah, you know, I'm not fat. So I guess that's a, that's a good thing. You know, um, it's, it's not too high. I'm all good. And then, um, he goes, you're fighting in, in Australia in two and a half weeks. And I go, no way. Australia. Wait, I said, and then but, I, t I but he, he didn't ask you, uh, what, uh, how's your shape? Uh, how's your weight? Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> the, I know the, 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 nobody, nobody matters about but, your yeah, shape. He's like, nah, you're going. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, nah, but because obviously he knew that I was training it. I told him, like, I'm training every day, bro. So if you have anything for me, I'll be good to go. Um, and that this is why, like, all, always trying to stay in shape all year round and suffer this. And then, uh, yeah, like, at that point, I, I genuinely felt very weird like I, I was crying to him on the phone um obviously i told him you know thank thank you so much like I, I can't believe we you know that this has all happened um but yeah that that was probably a time which i think meant more to me just because of what had happened so yeah if you ask me did i expect all of that to happen 10 years ago being in the ufc yes but the way that has happened absolutely not so how did he do this uh what get me back to the ufc yeah because I, I don't think that, that that it's like so easy to do. Yeah, well, the good thing is, uh, obviously, I'd been in the UFC before. Usually, if you end up doing well, they'll t and if you're young as yeah, well, they'll take yeah. you back. Luckily, it's a compliment for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. It's like <laughs> the young man over yeah, here. Young yeah. and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so, luckily for me, I mean, when I got the call, it was it was yeah it was about two two and a half weeks before my birthday i was i was 28 and then i literally turned 29 uh when when uh when it, when i went out for the fight so the first fight i had back after injury against lee chadwick um 
it was a good fight, but no one was really talking about it because I won by decision. I did what I had to do. I, it was nothing great, no, nothing spectacular by any means. But the big thing, I, I remember before my fight on New Year's Eve against Chuck Campbell, my dad kept on telling me, he's like, Modestus, we work so much. Why the hell can't you get a knockout with your hands? Like, I'm waiting. <laughs> like, he told me this before. You, you can't tell uh, <laughs> things like that. You can't. You just can't. You he's just like, can't. He's like, Modestus, I've been waiting for so long. Like, what's going on? And, you know, obviously, I just took it as a joke. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, you, you, you kind of go forward and, 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 and stuff like this. And then, obviously, I get the knockout uh, in the fourth round. And, it you know... I put the clip on my Instagram, it ends up going viral, you know. Uh, I ended up getting, I think it's like 10 million views or something. Ooh, um, like, you know, more than more than 50,000 likes on, on, on Instagram. So that already, like, for example, if I'd won by decision, boring decision, but getting the belt for the second time, which is very difficult to do. I think there's only a, like, you know, maybe like Dan Hardy, Nicholas Dalby, a couple of others that have done that in Cage Warriors. So that already looked very good. Yeah. So I had a good resume. And who the hell wants to fight Tyson Pedro, who's a very well-established name in the UFC on yeah. two and a half weeks notice? No, no one. one. And anyone that was contracted with the UFC, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't think they'd want to take it because they, they want time to prepare. They've yeah, got their contract. Sure, sure. They want to they obviously make sure, like, listen, I want to give myself the best opportunity. So it's kind of like, oh, well, who... Who in their right mind is going to take a fight uh, in in a country 19 hours away on two and a half weeks notice? I know a guy. <laughs> but, but you know, at, at the end of the day, he knew how much it meant to me and he knew that. And he's got a very good relationship with the UFC. Yeah. Uh, very good relationship. So um, I think he's one of the top managers uh, around. So, you know, uh, obviously he's got a good relationship. Obviously they knew about me. Uh, he'd been talking about me and then that's how it came together. So, you know credit to iridium sports agency for for helping out with that and uh credit to my dad for maybe planting in my subconscious that i've got to knock him out <laughs> Wonderful. and uh, how many fights uh, do you have on the contract i've got one more one more yeah yeah and you planning to have uh, that uh, fight in i'm hoping probably march or april time uh that's what i'm hoping whether it happens we don't know but i definitely want to fight in the uk I want to fight in London. Um, uh, they're planning uh, a show in London. I think that's what that's what they're thinking to do. Um, it might be a little bit later than that, but definitely, I've traveled to three different countries. Uh, Better yeah, later than, than than. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I've, I went to Australia, fought an Australian. Went to Vegas, fought an American. Went to Brazil, fought a Brazilian. I'm like, you know, it'd be nice to when I'm coming out hearing cheers from the crowd as opposed to booze everywhere. You know, so. Um, don't, don't you feel the, the booze like uh, uh, motivating you? Yeah, it does. I, I, I definitely, I definitely enjoy it. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. But um, I think I've. There's other things that you know when you travel like like the jet lag and 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 you know the the, the time difference and and stuff like this and going to someone else's backyard. I mean, not to say that it kind of gives them a little bit of an advantage, like just being on your home turf. You know, like a football team playing on their on their mm. on their home field you know so it's the same like me whether they give it to me or not it doesn't matter because at the end of the day i've got to go and do the job and i'm obviously very motivated and ready to to do whatever but that's where i'd like to fight um if you ask me what's my ideal situation but at the end of the day you got to pick them off one by one the main thing i'm actually concentrating on in my head mm. actually right now not it's not even about a fight it's just about getting better and making the improvements to make sure that when i go back i'm going to be very dangerous wonderful and you you was talking about the uh, about the talk uh, with your manager and like well i was training all the time and he called me and blah 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 do you have a specific preparation uh, technique or you just like like a lot of guys just training, training, training. Then, like maybe a little bit in, more intense training before the fight, and that's it. You you're ready to go. So I mean, every every time we have an opponent, we're we're working specific things that we think are gonna work yeah. on that guy. Um, so I'm pretty much anything that I want to work on specifically that I know I'm a bit weaker at. I do that outside of a training camp or in my off season, essentially. So, 
<coughs> because Sorry. because because we have we have specific uh, preparation uh, technique. Um, you almost go crazy as suicidal even thoughts coming come into your head <laughs> when we go to, uh, through our preparation yeah and some people um, that started uh, to to do it with us and they were like in the middle of the version <laughs> they feel the same i said i, I told you <laughs> but i didn't f- uh, thought it would be like that like, <laughs> very and, intense and, yeah and when you when you like not alone preparing for a for a fight it's always better you know because yeah. you see that others uh, feel like shit <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but but it's like pff, it's yeah. horrible it's horrible it's a horrible uh, period of time but uh, but then y- you feel like a s- super compensation like w- we call yeah. it yeah it comes like uh for a few days but you ha- need to kn- need to new know your body and you know catch this super compensation like because it's, it's only a few days of it and uh you like going like 110 percent of your power you're yeah. faster you're stronger you you mo- have more stamina yeah your 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 focus is, is like pff, on target yeah amazing yeah uh, but a lot of guys that, that 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 i know from other countries other clubs they just train 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 maybe maybe a little bit extra rounds or extra strong rounds uh, on the bags or on the pads and that's it and they're ready to go so, so what about you yeah so it I mean, like I say, everything just becomes a specific to an opponent when, 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 when I have a fight. And also training, like, as you mentioned, it just becomes a bit stricter. Like, you know, like, for example, if right now I needed to teach a private and I'm, I might have to miss a session here. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I'll do another session later. Miss what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even my dad's probably looking at me. What do you mean miss a session? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Why would you ever miss a session? but um yeah, better miss a job yeah better eat less yeah yeah, eat yeah, less, yeah. But yeah 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 but you know like um so i'm i'm training i'm trying to work on things that i know in my head a week you know so i almost push myself into areas where you know like it's kind of shark infested waters for me and mm-hmm. um so it forces me to do the things that I'm weak at to try and improve them to try and get stronger at. But that's what I focus on outside of a training camp or preparing for a specific opponent. And then um, and then when it gets to an actual you know fight being announced and everything, my dad looks very closely. My dad, along with my other coach, Danny, they, uh, they look at very closely at what sort of tendencies uh, the fighters have that I'm fighting, what kind of things they're... Uh, they're doing specifically in their fights and then we try and uh try and coordinate everything accordingly it's it's good what um uh my dad does everything like in terms of especially like striking and the strategy wise and then danny always he always does techniques that i'm i know 100 percent i'm gonna have to use in the fight a little bit later or closer towards the fight because you know it's going to stay fresh on my head but the whole training camp yeah. he's working on little things to build me up to the pinnacle at the end of the camp which is when i'm going to be uh when i'm going to actually need to u- use those particular moves in the like fight. A example like um there was something to do with like a a, a defense against the cage yeah. for example so we've been working on an over overhook uh defense and, and blocking the arm right yeah. so th- there'll be like different movements like different attacks that the guy would do so it'd be like week per week um over like eight weeks like one little extra step on each of those things but then right before the fight he told me just one thing that I ended up using in the fight that helped completely negate the guy's uh, offense against the cage, which was to push the head on the other side yeah. to uh, uh, to not allow him to get the powerful elbow. So yeah. to block that and then push the head to the other side. It completely negated his game. He wasn't able to do anything. Then I was able to get out and then come back with my striking. Well, so it's it's stuff like this, really. And um, with my dad, it's just it's essentially just working everything that... Uh, just over and over and over again, like like movements that I'm probably going to use in 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 the fight to 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 catch the other guy out essentially, or what he what his strengths are um, to negate those and to build my build into my own strengths basically. And uh, how long are your, your training sessions? Um, usually, it's not like extremely. When I go to when I go to uh, train at my MMA gym. I do jujitsu for 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 an hour, hour and a half, and then after that MMA, so another hour probably. So, so it's two, it's w- two and a half, and it's one and up, one, one one after the other. But usually with my dad, like I say, if we're doing strength and conditioning, 
usually doesn't go longer than an hour um because we literally it's only me that the, you know it's just me and him in the gym so we just go boom straight from one to the other so it's only me getting tortured and then um for uh for the for the striking and stuff like that the other sessions usually you know with a bit of technique and then doing rounds probably about you know 40 45 minutes something like that so um you know the longer sessions are not quite you know the ones where it goes for two and a half yeah. hours with the jiu-jitsu obviously there's technique involved and stuff like this so it's not just yeah, yeah. bang 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 like going constantly for 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 that amount of time uh with my dad it's a little bit more intense the whole time um and then uh when i do my mma it's kind of like up up and down with wrestling an hour jiu-jitsu an hour um so roughly on average probably about an hour okay so we were talking about um did you believed uh 10 years ago that you're going to be in a spot uh, as you are and um what kind of person and in what spot do you see yourself after 10 years from now from the next 10 years well in my head yeah uh genuine- because, because, because like we need we need that mountain every yeah. all, every man ha- have to have his mountain to to conquer yeah so where are you going where are you well, having ge- genuinely uh i see myself being a ufc world champion i see myself being able to take care of my family financially uh the way that i've i've been dreaming of i remember the the first you know the 50 grand bonus that i got i just gave that to my parents because i want to you know i want to help Respect so that. i appreciate that really. you know that because that that meant a lot and i actually wrote it on my board at home that that was what i was going to do and so you know it's stuff like that i want to be able to take care of my family so that they don't have to like my dad for example when he you know when he's retired and out, out of this game he needs to do nothing just rest relax i want him to be all taken care of same as my family you know um so obviously it's to be have financial freedom which you know for me it's just to not have to worry about anything you know maybe the mortgage paid off or the pensions taken care of or, or whatever like that being a world champion but i also want to be I, I genuinely still have the ability to go down as one of the greatest fighters in the ufc um and i just need to work towards that you know uh i need to show my skill set i need to go out there and uh it's essentially just be the best that i know i can be you know if i if i reach my full potential um train properly and do everything right that's where i expect to be in the next 10 years and also uh, i expect in the next 10 years to be at the end of my mma career for me to be retired by then and to to look on to to new adventures what age uh you you think probably 38 or 39 38 39 maybe fa- maybe maybe like 38 something like that because in our in our weight class you can't go to 40 years mm-hmm. 40 41 yeah you, you still have you know maybe n- not uh, so much speed but uh, you have uh, timing experience uh, yeah. explosive power yeah the, the, those are the the main weapons like light heavyweight and heavyweight division yeah in the slower or in lower, yeah. lower lower classes they're more more of a speed and stamina yeah yeah know. which you lose obviously as you get older yeah, yeah for but sure th- that's what the, that's <laughs> why the boys usually 35 34 they, they 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 leave yeah okay let's time travel again <laughs> and if you you now you had the opportunity to tr- uh, time travel back when you was young when you just started what you would say to yourself what when i was like very young like five when, when, six, you, when you started your road when i started my road um uh, to the mountain <laughs> do you know what um i take don't a, know take your time take your time i'd i'd say um again it's sort of enjoy again it's it's just like you've really got to enjoy the process of doing this just know this is for something greater yeah you know at the time when i was younger i was like wondering why the hell am i in 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 my sitting room training when i could be outside playing football and i had no choice you know and it's like nah like that that has made me who i am today so you know to tell them like don't worry this is all for a good reason this is all for a good purpose so <laughs> don't stress this this the, you 
like basically you and even when you're young like you kind of like everyone thinks like the next 10 years or whatever and you think oh bloody hell like 10 years that's a that's a that's a long way away but in reality like it just comes very quickly like to think i'm gonna be you know uh i'm gonna be 30 in in february like you know you're thinking wow my 20s are now gone Do you know what I mean? uh, sorry you don't have the that 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 you know that thing before thirty because a lot of a lot of guys do before thirty, but just just before uh, yeah, turn yeah. to thirty, some kind of weird things and thoughts yeah. in your head. Mate, I'm I'm clinging on to my twenties as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 everyone, Holy that, yeah, I, everyone keeps talking to me. Everyone keeps telling me like. Uh, uh, Modestus, like you're pretty much 30. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm 29, <laughs> right? I'm not 30 just yet. But, but soon you will realize that you are. Do you are? Yeah, you actually, you are. Yeah, I know, I know. But it, well, one thing I can probably say is that you know, at 30, you're you're more developed athletically, you know, or you should be, anyways, you know. And uh, you know, I'm more mature as a person, or at least I hope, I hope, I hope I am. And uh, yeah, like this is essentially going towards the peak of my athleticism, you know, like 31, 32 is probably like the absolute limit in terms of what your body can produce athletically. And then it, yeah, the people say it slowly deteriorates off that, but not, not really, you know, you, you almost maintain it. And then, yeah, going towards your forties, that's when it, when it go when it goes down a bit more. So, you know, I'm essentially reaching my athletic prime, uh, and it's a uh, very, uh, it's a very exciting bit because it's like, okay, now we can see what I can really get out of myself. Um, you know, where I probably didn't get it when I was 20. So um, yeah, and I've learned a hell of a hell of a lot of things over the years, that's for sure. Okay, and I think we're gonna uh, go to the end and uh, last question. Yeah. What kind of advice could you get uh, to a person that's stuck, maybe, drop down and don't know how to get up uh, how to how to continue how to how to how to develop how to grow how to you know uh, have a goal to reach a goal how to continue his road to the top yeah um well <laughs> to be honest like uh depending on what they're doing you doesn't matter you just got to to be honest, I think one thing is just to just to make sure you you're improving physically every day. Because if you're improving physically, you're improving. You're going to then improve mentally. That's going to give you the confidence um, in your outside life and things that are going on, whatever business that is, to know that you can overcome obstacles. Because when you're when you're doing things physically, you have to break barriers. You know, you have to try and uh, you know, in order to build muscle, you have to do things a certain way. You got to have discipline or or, or, or whatever so eating right is one thing you know obviously going to the gym and starting to do some training start to see some progression and that's going to build your confidence as well you know that's going to build your confidence the fact that oh hold on a minute i said i'm going to do something i did it and now now i'm getting the rewards from it what happens if i do that in other areas of life imagine if i, I do that in you know whatever like like my business outside of it just know that oh okay i'm going to keep working on it and you're going to have like your little failures you're going to have like your your little things that that aren't going so right and then you realize that you can overcome those obstacles and then you just keep going forward but yeah for someone that's faced some some real obstacles in their life also look at it it's like you know i've, I've learned a valuable lesson here you know if you just look at it like plainly like oh crap this is a bad thing that happened you're never going to get anywhere but if you think about it, it's like, okay, what have, I, what have I learned from this? What can I take from this? What is the universe trying to tell me in terms of how am I going to be able to move forward? Uh, and then, yeah, you just slowly just keep figuring out day by day and enjoy enjoy the process. Definitely one of the main things because if you're not enjoying what it is that you're doing, then why the hell are you doing it in the first place? You know what I mean? You're, you're never going to really uh, get the full fulfillment out of life if you're not doing it that way. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. You're the man. And one more thing. Come on, say something to Lithuanian audience. Labas Labas I Don't be hurry. Don't say us. They got us maced us. Uh, no, no, Shirde, Archuletova, cut to Ush Palekema, Ermasteresim Delgo, Pargeles.
moving forward, yeah. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Ačiū jūs visiems, kad buvote su mums kartu, ačiū, kad žiūrėjote. Nepamirškite sekti Modesta Bukauska jo Instagramo profilė. Nepasidžiūrėkite parašyti suporto žinutės jiems taip pat, nes mes esame vėlėtuvėm. Mumės privalome palaikyti vienas kitą. Ačiū dar, kad tu modėsite, kad buvai su mumis. Labai. Tėtė, irgi ačiū. Tėtis buvo visą laiką kadrą. Rodė pirštų. Nesikeikai, nesikeikai. Bet mes užpipinsim. Nu ir ką, važiuojame šiandien treniruotę. Einam, einam. Važiuojame.